Right now at noon, the Joplin Interfaith Coalition hosts its annual bake sale fundraiser for local students. We're also going to see clouds start to increase and possible thunderstorms later tonight. More details later. And for state music lovers, we're able to add some new tunes to their collections at the Four State Record Show. The Four State's most watched news starts now. A Joplin man has been charged with child pornography. This is KOM News at Noon. I'm Elise Snowy. 22-year-old Reagan Elijah Alexa Garcia, also known as Elijah Garcia, has been charged with one count of receiving and distributing a child pornography. Garcia will remain in federal custody pending a detention hearing tomorrow, March 5th. The FBI is seeking the public's assistance in the investigation. Jasper County detectives are looking for two persons of interest involved in a fatal stabbing on Saturday. The male victim in the stabbing has been identified as Seth R. Langford of Carl Junction, who was transported to a local hospital with severe injuries and was taken into surgery. The victim later died from his injuries. Detectives are currently searching for two persons of interest, Scott B. Burleson of Wyandotte and Paul D. Phillips of Seneca. If you have any information of, on these individuals, you were asked to contact the Jasper County Police Department. Fire crews responded to the Robin Ridge neighborhood around 11 p.m. as the fire was near near Gene Hatfield Drive. Web City Police Department went oh, police went door to door to evacuate residents as fire crews battled the blaze. No one was injured. A fence and the siding of a home were damaged. Authorities are investigating the cause of the fire. Starting off today, so far already up to 74 degrees by 1130. Now our high record set back in 1961 was 77 and our forecasted high getting up to about 7980. So we're looking to possibly break a record today. Now winds are still blowing and that could cause some issues for fire weather. However, it, it will die down as we move into this evening. We see clouds increase and we're tracking a system moving in possibly tonight in our southern southeastern counties we may see some thunderstorms. Now most of the area is pretty moist. We have a lot of high humidity due to that system moving in a little bit later today and for the rest of the week. So we have had some dry conditions the last week or so. However, for the next week we're seeing a lot of more wet conditions with a lot of rain chances moving in. I'll give you more details in just a bit. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, folks in Joplin, Saturday, we're able to get a sweet treat and support students in need at the same time. The Joplin Interfaith Coalition hosted its annual bake sale to benefit Joplin Bright Futures. The coalition consists of groups from several religious affiliations coming together to support the community. The bake sale helps Bright Futures support local students living in poverty have opportunities for success. Very important for everyone to be on the same platform regardless of our uh, differences in faith or um, you know wherever we come from and uh, we come from different communities and different backgrounds so i think it's a, a great uh, platform to learn about each other and learn about working together there were also board games face painting and a silent auction at the event well, four state music lovers were able to add some new items to their collections at the four state record show. The Carthage Memorial Hall hosted the event. Attendees were able to visit vendors showing cassettes, CDs, equipment, memorabilia and vinyls. I think it's the perfect art package. You have the physical cover art, you've got the music media, you can see, read the liner notes, read, see the pictures. You know, multiple people have probably owned this wonderful item and it's just, it's like Pokemon. For me, I've got to collect them all. The event offered various vinyls as door prizes throughout the day. Well, trout season is just starting in state parks across Missouri. This season can see thousands of fishermen come out to try to get the catch of the day. KOM's Samantha Walker tells us more about the increase in tourism impacts local businesses. I've been here pretty consistently about every year. Roaring River is busy with fishermen behind me, and for local business owners, they say so far, it's one of the busiest seasons yet. Fishermen from all around are finding their way to Roaring River State Park in Cassville for trout season. For Tim Holmesley, fishing is a passion. He has owned Tim's fly shop outside of the park for roughly 30 years. 
Roar River in general is a uh, big boom for Cassville. I would say half of the places around here pretty much survive on the summer uh, income. Tim says he has more customers every year. But I opened at 8 and there was four cars waiting for me. Even new business owners can see the impact of trout season. I actually missed this last year by the time I uh, acquired this place and I'm absolutely in love with it. It is fantastic to see all these new faces and everybody around. It's, it's a lot of fun. Fishermen say it's great to be able to help support the local economy. That's just, it's great to help your local community out. It's just good to be out there with them and, you know, supporting them. Tim says he enjoys being able to see all the people getting into fishing for the first time. And his shop is known amongst fishermen, even by those who have never visited. He always tells like kind of what colors are in season this time of year. He's very informative on that portion of it. In Cassville, Samantha Walker, KOM News. Trout season at Roaring River Park goes until October 31st. To fish at the park, you need a fishing permit and a daily trout tag. Coming up, Trader Joe's is recalling a popular frozen food item. We'll have the details. And later, we're making chocolate chip cheesecake bars in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. A Pennsylvania chocolate bar maker recalled some products over possibly potential fatal allergic reaction issues. Scranton-based Electric City Sweets recalled 1,644 red velvet cake bars. The treats packaging did not reveal the required presence of milk in the ingredient list. The FDS says people with milk allergies who ingest this product could experience allergic reactions. The chocolate was sold on the Electric City Suites website and from wholesale accounts serving Pennsylvania, Florida, California and North Carolina. A popular Trader Joe's dish has been recalled for possibly containing hard plastics. U.S. regulators say more than 61,000 pounds of steamed chicken soup dumplings from the grocery store chain possibly contain plastic from permanent markers. The recall follows consumer reports of plastic in the Trader Joe's branded dumplings. The Food Safety and Inspection Service urges consumers to throw away the recalled dumplings or return them to any location for a full refund. The business of beauty is a multi-billion dollar industry, while beauty marketing campaigns show faces of all hues when it comes to creating and developing beauty products. Some say there's still work to be done. This Woman's History Month, CBS's Dania Bacchus introduces us to a scientist working to make the beauty industry more inclusive. 24-year-old chemist AJ Aday brings science to beauty. This is zinc oxide, so this is responsible for what absorbs the UV light in your sunscreens. AJ is earning her PhD in teaching at UCLA. She wants to draw more scientists of color into the research and development segment of the beauty industry. So you'll be surprised to actually understand that the SPF value on a bottle is tested from people with lighter skin tone. As a student and researcher, AJ, whose parents immigrated from Ghana, saw what she calls an inclusivity gap. People of color were being left out of research and testing for beauty products. To fix that, in 2021, she founded Sula Labs. When there's not a lot of people that are able to really help you understand the efficacy of these products from a whole spectrum of skin tones, that becomes a problem. Brands come to Sula Labs and the eight member team helps formulate and test products specifically for darker skin. The company is currently working with at least 20 brands. If it's a brand that focuses on, you know, darker skin tones or has a has a black founder, we may have touched it. Rihanna broke down barriers in 2017 when she launched her Fenty Beauty line. You could be the scientific counterpart to Rihanna Fenty. I think what she did for the beauty industry is wild because all she did was help give shades to people that look like me. So I think the scientific counterpart to Rihanna is effectively what we're also trying to do too. AJ also hopes to be a game changer, using science to show black women they have value and a voice in the beauty industry. Danya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. In the U.S., less than 2% of scientists are black women. Only 4 to 5% of all employees in the U.S. beauty industry are black. Still to come on KOM News at Noon, Mr. Food. Ever wonder what recipes our viewers love the most? Well, today we're sharing an oldie but goodie that you don't want to miss. And up next, we'll talk about the possible thunderstorm chances we see later on tonight. 
Well, we started off the day pretty windy. I know gusts upwards of 35 to 40 miles per hour still. They will die down a little bit, but we do see clouds start to roll in. Taking a look outside at our seventh and range line camera. Like I said, still windy and we are having inc increasing clouds as we move into tonight. Now, temperatures are also still going to be pretty warm. Right now, our high is about 76 degrees. Our record high set back in 1961 is 77. So we are on the track to beat a record today. In addition to that, we may see some thunderstorm chances, mostly in our southeastern counties, but that will be later on tonight as we're tracking the next system. Now these wind gusts are, like I said, still 20, 25 miles per hour. They will start to die down as we move into the afternoon hours. Now we have a low risk for strong storms possible, like I said, for our southeastern counties, and that's due to possibly the instability surface pairing with the moisture that we see could result in maybe some strong wind, possibly some hail. That's just going to be if we see all of this come together and these storms get organized in our area. Now, taking a look, we see around 6 p.m., Nevada may have a storm start to develop quickly moves out of the way by the evening. This is where we're going to see our strongest amount of storms possible along this front. And that's if these storms do get organized and are able to create enough uplift to cause some thunderstorms. Now they're quickly out of the way as well. Just some switching to some light rain around midnight and then clearing out tomorrow. We should have a pretty clear day, not seeing much. And then our next chance of rain will be Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Thursday, we're going to have starting around midnight throughout the entire day, some heavier rain, possibly some thunderstorms here and there, but mostly it's just going to be heavy rain across the region and it's looking to be sticking around all the way through Thursday by 3 p.m. Now this is 7 p.m. Like I said, possibly some thunderstorms here and there, and that's going to continue all the way through Friday. So Monday, we may see those p.m. storms in our southeastern counties if those storms do get organized as that front passes with our high being 79 degrees. Now dropping lows to the 40s, Tuesday should be a pretty clear day, partly cloudy, maybe some sunshine again and temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, so pretty warm. And then Wednesday is when we're going to see some more storms. Now, right now it's tracking to come in after midnight. So on Thursday, however, we could see some rain showers a little bit earlier. Thursday and Friday is our heaviest chance of rain that we'll see throughout the days. And we could see some embedded thunderstorms along with the heavy chance of rain. Now it's going to drop the temperatures down, not as drastic as what we saw last weekend, but we could see temperatures drop down to the 50 degrees on Saturday. Moving into next weekend though, Sunday and Monday with temperatures warm back up, sun comes back out and we could start to experience maybe some fire weather again next weekend. Well, it's certainly windy today uh, out there for sure. Yeah, walking into work today, my hair was blowing like crazy. I know, you and I both. We got, <laughs> we got a lot of hair on our head. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, stick around. We're making a chocolate chip cheesecake bars in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. We'll be right back. Well, if you're looking for a delicious crowd pleaser to start off your week, look no further than these ooey gooey chocolate chip cheesecake bars. Howard is showing us the recipe for this sweet treat in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Hey, do yourself a favor and stop what you're doing to watch what we're making today. I say this because it's probably one of the most popular and most loved Mr. Food Test Kitchen recipes of all time. It's our chocolate chip cheesecake bars. And if you already have the recipe, today might be a good day to make them again. First, to make the filling, we simply beat together some cream cheese, eggs, sugar, and vanilla. We'll set that aside while we cut a couple of tubes of refrigerated chocolate chip cookie dough into slices. Next, we line the bottom of a 9 by 13 dish with half of these and press them together to make a crust. Now it's time to spoon on our cheesecake filling. Make sure you level it out so it bakes evenly. On top of that, goes the rest of the sliced cookie dough. Don't worry about the space between the cookies, that's okay. After it bakes and cools, cut it into bars and serve them with milk. Then get ready for lots of oohs and ahs. The recipe for our chocolate chip cheesecake bars isn't just timeless, it's easy, 
foolproof, and most importantly, they taste amazing. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a favorite classic way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Well, you can find this recipe along with a lot more good food from the Mr. Food Test Kitchen online. Just go to our website at koemnewsnow.com. Now, here's a look at the four state market prices. Today's Ag Report is brought to you by Eubanks Equipment. So tonight we do see some possible thunderstorms developing in our southeastern counties. Tomorrow should be pretty clear and then we have more rain chances Wednesday through Friday with our heaviest amounts of rain falling early Thursday all the way through Friday evening. Well, we definitely need some rain, so nothing yes. too much to complain about. I'm actually looking yeah. forward to it. I like the rain, so hopefully Thursday and Friday we will get a lot of that. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. And coming up tonight at 5, deep brain simulation is being employed by researchers to combat severe depression, with doctors likening the process to a brain pacemaker. Plus, we'll hear from the Reddings Mill Fire Department about the dangers of the elevated fire risks in our area. And a demolition in liberal Missouri. We'll take a look at what came down and the wreckage. Join us for those stories and more on Kalium News at 5. Well, Lindsay, it is just going to be a beautiful, beautiful start to this week. Just I know, you know, we had a great weekend, but yes. we need rain and... Yeah, know. well, today is still pretty nice. Yeah. Temperature is getting up a almost to 80 again. Yep, a little windy, but still pretty gorgeous out there. And then with the rain coming in, hopefully it'll be a good week. Yeah, I'm looking forward it to it. Cool things down a little bit. We've had a lot of fires in the area, yes. so maybe we'll, you know. It'll help a lot. Help now, a next lot. weekend, we could still have some fire issues. Absolutely. All righty, well, that's the news for now. Thank you for joining us on KOEM News at noon from all of us here in the studio. Have a great day.